celebrated wine writer, and she is here today to tell you about something you can participate in if you are a fan of Canadian wines. Mm -hmm. Tonight, a closer look. This is Natalie McLean, a celebrated wine writer, and she is here today to tell you about something you can participate in if you are a fan of Canadian wines. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to have your say and Absolutely. offer your opinion. These wines all have that in common. Yes, and, and they're all Canadian grown and made, but more importantly, they, these are the wines, some of them, that Canadians across the country love. They've nominated these wines for the Great Canadian Wine Match, among others. So we're going to start, before we get into the intricacies and the delicacies <laughs> and the flavor characteristics of the wines, we're going to tell you about the competition and the way to get to the competition. We'll have a link on our website to Natalie's website. It's called, as we said, the Great Canadian Wine Match. And it's a match because of the play, on, the play really, the double entendre of matching and pairing food with wine. Exactly. So it, people are nominating these wines in six food categories. Match is also a play on the word competition because you can vote for your favorites and kind of push them up the, the wall. But it's, it's your own wine idol. It's your own wine idol. You can vote wines off the island. No, you can't vote them off the island, but you can vote them up the wall. So people are, are looking at different Canadian wines from coast to coast to see what pairs best with chicken and beef and seafood and cheese, pizza and dessert. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with barbecue season, of course. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we're going to talk about the wines, but first, how you can participate. So you go to Natalie's website, and if, if a wine that you love is in here, you're able, as you say, to add it by Monday. Exactly. So we've got five days left. It's very easy. As you said, nataliemcclain.com. You just start filling out the wine name, and it almost fills it in for you. So it just takes a couple clicks to say, I love this wine. Uh, it should be in here. And so people are doing that, and then it just takes a click to vote for it. There was a time not too long ago when Canadian wines were seen as oh so pedestrian. Right. But that has changed, hasn't it? Has it has changed and you know it's changed so much. I, I, we win medals on international competitions. I think what, what really prompted this um, and the groundswell of support behind this competition is just how much our wines have progressed and how much they are loved and we're mm. proud to put them on the table now. Oh, well, this is great. They're on the table so let's start talking about them. Actually, sure. we're going to start, uh, we're both Nova Scotian gals, yes. so we're going to start on the East Coast with Three exactly. Nova Scotian wines, and this is the Lacadie Blanc. Lacadie Blanc is a sort of a native Nova Scotian grape. It's really well known, best known in Nova Scotia. Crisp white wines, almost like a really extra dry Riesling, great with seafood. And that's in the Annapolis Valley, by the way, Lucket Vineyards, as well as the other two wines we have here. And of course, Lacadie, referring to the uh, Acadie, yeah, the Acadian. Exactly, exactly. Now, this wine is? This is from Benjamin Bridge. It's Nova 7. It's actually coming out here in the Ontario market in the, in the next few weeks. It's beautiful. If you like Moscato Dasty, you'll love this. It's effervescent and light, and again, great with seafood on the barbecue. So that's another seafood. This is sort yeah. of a um, sparkling rosé. It is. So it's made in the same method as, as champagne but at about a third the price, it's beautiful. I challenge you to put it side by side with a rosé champagne and tell the difference. It's going to go with cheese, even pizza. I've heard you recommend rosés, especially at this time of year. It's yes. really, you say, moving into spring and summer, rosés are perfect. It's very, it's celebratory, and there's a nice sort of field fleeting raspberry essence to them. We are missing a few regions. We do not have wines from Quebec. We do not have wines from the prairies. Are people able to nominate any Quebec wines? Yes, they, they absolutely. Love? They're in the competition. Mm -hmm. um, I was just scrambling to bring in my favorites that are in my cellar. Not that <laughs> Quebec isn't my favorite. But these were in your fridge. <laughs> exactly, yeah. This is Thursday night. <laughs> but um, no, we've got lots of wines from Quebec. Uh, lots of terrific ice wines, ciders, fruit wines, meaning wines made from fruit other than grapes, um, as well as some dry wines. And we welcome wines from the prairies as well. There are a few fruit wines in the prairies. We'd love to see them nominated too. There's a bit of a, bit of a battle brewing. There a bit is. of a match here in Ontario Absolutely. between the Prince Edward County and the Niagara region. Exactly. And this is sort of new in the past number of years, but talk about the wines you've brought along to, rep to represent the yes. lovely, delicious grape rivalry. Well, we've got some cool climate Chardonnays, and those are just gorgeous. So, um, you know, we're looking right now at Rose Hall Run from Prince Edward County, and right in back of it is the Norm Hardy um, 
uh, cool climate Chardonnay as well from Prince Edward County. And that label really has garnered a lot of respect, hasn't it? It has. He, it's almost a cult classic now. Prince Edward County is a smaller region produce, production-wise uh, versus Niagara, but they are producing tremendous wines. I mean, they really are giving Niagara a run for their money in reality, too, as well as on the nomination board. You can see the votes going back and forth. Well, we have a lot of viewers in Prince Edward County, so this is your chance to elevate and to make them even uh, more renowned. Exactly. Here's one of our flagship wines just across Canada. It's Le Clos Jordan. It's, a, again, a cool climate Chardonnay from Niagara this time. And uh, this, uh, they make a range of Chardonnays like a lot of premium wineries do. This is one of their more quote-unquote entry level. It's still priced at about $25, but it's, it's a bargain. If you compare this to comparable quality from Burgundy, France, also wow. famous from Chardonnay, this is a deal. I really like it when you do the comparisons yes. in that way. <laughs> We're going to tell you about Cave Spring, actually, oh. when we come back after the break. That's another Niagara wine, and we'll talk more about Niagara and as we head west. Absolutely. We have Natalie McLean here talking about the Great Canadian Wine Match. And if you need a little encouragement to get involved, we constantly talk about eating local, what it does mm -hmm. for our environment, what it does for our local producers. Wait until you hear these statistics about wine and right. what it injects into the economy. If you yes. buy Canadian wine, Canadian wine, it's going to put about 7 or $8 into the economy because it's our own jobs, our own spin-off industries. It's, it's not just the wine itself, of course. It's the grape growers and everybody associated in that food chain, tourism, etc. If you buy a wine from outside Canada, a foreign wine, it injects about 45, 50 cents into mm -hmm. the economy. It's pretty dramatic. So if you have a favorite, favorite French wine, we're not discouraging that purchase. We're just saying maybe you could buy one from, say, Prince Edward County or mm -hmm. another region occasionally exactly. and, and just sort of shake it up and yeah. uh, support local winemakers and winemakers like we left off here right. we hadn't talked about cave spring which is from the niagara region it and is. they have a real variety they do i mean there's lots of different um they're famous for their crisp rieslings they're Riesling masters and and this wine is a beautiful wine with seafood especially as we head into the summer months mm. even grilled uh, seafood whatever you like but they, they do make a variety and they're one of the uh, oldest wineries but I think one of the best in Niagara interesting and the mm. Chenin Blanc is oh, yeah. is delicious as well beautiful. okay this is a Pe Henry of Pelham another long stay sort of stalwart in Niagara and one of our best producers again they to, uh, make a whole range of reds and whites. They're famous for their big reds, Baco Noir, which are terrific for barbecue. Think steak, hamburgers, grill, Canada Day. So this is your good barbecue pick. Yes. And, oh, look, you're even having us look ahead to Canada Day. Absolutely. We should tell you, the winners of this competition, there is a lot of prestige involved. Prestige, there is going to be a sticker on the bottle. Yes, those award decals. Everybody who is either nominated or wins can say, Canada's Best Wine for Seafood nominee or winner. And there'll also be a sleeve on the bottle. Like same. a neck tag with, with the same thing, but also maybe some recipes for uh, Canada Day or beyond so that we give consumers some helpful guidance. So suggesting that this yes. wine is great with, as we said, seafood or, or with poultry. Exactly. So, okay, this is the one, I love it when you say this. This is the <laughs> what How do you say this? You're getting there. Yeah. Gewurz demeanor. Gewurz demeanor. <laughs> Tell exactly. us about the Gewurz demeanor. Well, it's a beautiful wine. This one's from BC, actually, and it's a crisp white, but it's got some floral and spice notes to it. So if you've got a bit of spice or herb rub on that chicken or seafood, this is your go-to wine in the summer. Now, if you feel that we're going a little bit too fast, you can always watch Natalie tell you all of this again about the wines on our website. And, of course, there's always a link, and you just go to the News at Noon under Programs, and Natalie will give you the recap. Um, but this is a dessert wine. Yes, this is one of our famous ice wines, Toss from Niagara. Again, a really terrific producer. This one's made from a red grape, thus the color, um, but it would be beautiful with, uh, say, strawberry shortcake and maybe a bit of melting ice cream on the side and a sunny deck. See, this is where the whole pairing comes it in, does, it it, does. because they do. It brings out the features in both the food and the wine. Tell us about Quail's Gate. Quail's Gate. This is um, what they call their Optima, and it is a late harvest, meaning the grapes were picked later in the year. So it's got some sweetness, not quite as much as the ice wine we just looked at, but it's beautiful. Again, with any fruit-based dessert, it's from BC, 
And, you know, picking up your, on your point, Leanne, we do enjoy wine with food and good company. It's, it's not usually that we're drinking a lot of wines in isolation, unless you happen to be a lonely wine writer. But most of us <laughs> enjoy them with food, and that's why we decided to make this competition a food pairing one. To really, if it's going to be grassroots, people's choice, people voting, how do they enjoy wine? How do we enjoy wine? It's always with food. It's exciting to see how excited you are about Canadian wines. And we have the one last one. We will not miss the last one, which is Mission Absolutely. Hill from B.C. Mission Hill, again, uh, one of the big producers out in B.C., starts uh, with some entry-level wines, goes right up to cult classics uh, with Oculus and, and others. Um, a number of BC, uh, Mission Hill wines have been nominated in this competition. This is fantastic for your Victoria Day weekend barbecue. And you know, I think this is a fantastic event because any of you who may be frustrated wine writers and you're out there or or you're the person who's the go-to person for all of your friends and you always make the suggestions and you know what everyone else should know about, share. Exactly, share. And that's what this is about, coast-to-coast -to -coast toast to our own wines, <laughs> vote for them, nominate. It just takes a few clicks. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to be passionate about <laughs> these these wines. Coast to coast toast. She you waited till the end to, de to <laughs> deliver that line. And we should say, Natalie is going to be offering us, as of the beginning of June, a regular pick of the week, her wine choice of the week. They won't all be Canadian. They will be... But, but they'll be all available uh, locally in stores or directly from wineries. Everybody can buy them, but I'm looking forward to that, Leanne. Fantastic. Cheers you. to you. Cheers. Great idea, <laughs> okay. Michael.